What on earth are they up to? Blue Origin, often touted as SpaceX's competitor, but yet to send any vehicles into orbit, has recently taken aggressive actions to hinder Starship's plans in Florida and its subsequent activities. The journey to the aerospace frontier is proving to be more challenging than ever. On the ISS, alongside delays with Starliner, ongoing operational issues have now affected the scheduling of the next spacewalk mission. In other news, Firefly is poised to make a comeback after a prolonged hiatus following an incident. If you're ready, let's delve into these pressing issues in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Last week, the FAA officially released the Draft Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS, outlining the future operations of Starship at LC-39A Florida. This EIS presents several intriguing roadmaps, promising a bright future for the aerospace industry. However, not everyone is in favor of these plans, particularly SpaceX's competitors. Following the publication of the draft EIS, the FAA and SpaceX will spend 45 days collecting public comments on the document. Immediately after its release, Jeff Bezos's company Blue Origin submitted a scoping commentary outlining its objections. They specifically highlighted the proposed action to prepare an EIS evaluating the potential environmental impacts of issuing a commercial launch vehicle operator license to SpaceX for the Starship Super Heavy Launch Vehicle at Launch Complex 39A or LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center, KSC, Florida. The scoping commentary from Blue Origin highlights critical infrastructure concerns, focusing on SLC-36, LC-12, and LC-1 to LC-4. They also detail various systems and human resources involved. Blue Origin asserts that the EIS fails to ensure protection for corporate and personal property, employee and company safety, government agency property, access to airspace, and necessary maritime resources. They raise concerns about environmental impacts from Starship's launches, including ground systems, transportation, in-flight effects, and potential unusual incidents. Furthermore, Blue Origin emphasizes Starship Super Heavy operations are anticipated to have a significantly larger environmental footprint than any other launch system currently active at KSC or CCSFS. With its capacity of up to 5,200 metric tons of liquid methane, Starship Super Heavy may require safety buffers that could encroach upon operational areas of other companies, government facilities, and public spaces. While specific safety margin data hasn't been disclosed, given the expected launch frequency and vehicle scale, the impact of Starship Super Heavy operations at KSC could surpass that of operations at Starbase. To address these concerns, Blue Origin has proposed several measures to the FAA that directly impact Starship's operations. Key proposals from Blue Origin include limiting the launch and landing rates of Starship Super Heavy and related activities to mitigate the impacts identified by Blue Origin, constructing additional infrastructure at the Florida Launch Complex for Starship to accommodate more entities and prevent conflicts with other organizations and systems, investing in enhancing the entire Launch Complex infrastructure, including reinforcing existing facilities and constructing new ones to redirect traffic away from the proposed action area restricting Starship Super Heavy's operational hours to minimize conflicts with other companies, implementing measures to mitigate potential impacts of Starship Super Heavy operations that may necessitate evacuations or interruptions in the operations of other companies, requiring SpaceX or the government to compensate third parties for direct losses or long-term impacts on their operations caused by Starship Super Heavy activities. And last but not least, implementing independent mandatory penalties for SpaceX if activities are conducted outside the EIS framework or violate other regulations. Presented numerous scenarios for the FAA's consideration, all aimed at preventing or restricting Starship's operations in Florida. While I acknowledge the importance of safety concerns for people, property, and the environment, I believe Blue Origin is leveraging these factors unfairly to impede Starship's activities before they even commence. It appears that Blue Origin's actions are driven by personal interests, particularly the operation of their orbital rocket, New Glenn. 
It's evident that the presence of Starship at the Florida Launch Complex would overshadow New Glenn and potentially diminish public and investor interest in their endeavors. Therefore, Blue Origin's proposals to limit Starship's flight times and frequencies seem motivated by these competitive pressures. In conclusion, while safety and environmental considerations are valid, it's crucial to ensure fair competition and foster innovation in the aerospace industry. Looking ahead, Blue Origin's actions appear to contradict the goals of the aerospace industry. The potential relocation of Starship to Florida aims to support critical future missions, including Artemis 3 in September of 2026, which aims to return humans to the moon. With China aggressively advancing in the lunar race, increasing Starship's appearance, launch, and testing frequency is crucial for SpaceX, NASA, and other agencies to fully develop systems and preparations for this pivotal mission. However, Blue Origin seeks to impose limitations on these activities. What are your thoughts on Blue Origin's stance? Share your opinions in the comments down below, and don't forget to like the video, share it, and subscribe to our channel for more updates on this pressing issue. Next, we're shifting our focus to the ISS and the recent delay of the spacewalk mission. NASA canceled a scheduled spacewalk at the International Space Station today, which at the time of this recording was the 24th of June. Due to a coolant leak in the spacesuit hatch just before astronauts were set to exit, at 8.52 a.m. EDT, Mission Control instructed NASA astronauts Tracy Caldwell Dyson and Mike Barrett to halt their planned six-and-a-half-hour spacewalk outside the International Space Station, or the ISS. By 8.46 a.m., they had already switched to internal power in their suits, technically initiating the spacewalk. The astronauts officially concluded the spacewalk by opening the ISS hatch at 9.51 a.m. EDT. During the NASA television livestream broadcast, the astronauts reported encountering literally water everywhere as they transitioned their suits to internal power for the extravehicular activity. Dyson noted that the leak appeared to originate from a servicing and cooling umbilical, or SU. SCU on her spacesuit. Despite the seriousness of the situation, the astronauts were not in immediate danger due to the leak. NASA issued a brief official statement following the cancellation and indicated that further details would be provided on the agency's ISS blog. Regarding the incident, Dyson described, I could see the ice crystals were flowing out there, and then um, just like a snow cone machine, there was uh, ice forming at that port. On the, SCU. the SCU is designed to connect to the ISS airlock as astronauts prepare for the final stages of disconnecting for the EVA. They were still in the hatch with the external door open when the leak occurred, closing it shortly after terminating the spacewalk. Astronaut Butch Wilmore remarked, It was pretty impressive. We could just watch our snowstorm. This marks the second postponement of this particular spacewalk, following a June 13th attempt with a different astronaut group, Matt Dominic and Tracy Dyson, delayed due to a spacesuit discomfort issue with Matt Dominic. A July 2nd spacewalk is scheduled, but its status remains uncertain under these circumstances. The purpose of the spacewalk was to retrieve faulty communications equipment, known as a radio frequency group, and to swab the ISS exterior to collect evidence of microorganisms in extreme microgravity environments. This recent EVA was intended to be the first of two upcoming spacewalks focused on ongoing scientific research and maintenance of the orbital laboratory. Initially, NASA planned three spacewalks, but after the postponement on June 13th, they adjusted to two. I don't wish to assign blame, but I find it puzzling why ISS issues have become more frequent since Starliner's arrival at the station. Could there be a spiritual factor at play here? Regardless, I hope these challenges will soon be resolved and operations return to normal. Next up, let's discuss Firefly and their return after several months since last year's incident. Firefly announced late on June 21st that it is gearing up for an alpha rocket launch scheduled for June 27th at midnight Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Pacific on June 26th, within a half-hour window. Dubbed the Noise of Summer mission, it aims to deploy eight NASA-sponsored small sats into low Earth orbit under a NASA Venture Class Launch Services Demo 2 contract. 
This launch will mark the fifth mission of the Alpha rocket and is anticipated to achieve full success, becoming its second fully successful mission. This launch will be Alpha's first mission since a December 2023 flight carrying a Lockheed Martin technology demonstration payload. During that mission, the rocket's upper stage failed to relight, resulting in the satellite being stranded in a low perigee orbit. The spacecraft re-entered within several weeks, but Lockheed Martin stated it accomplished its mission objectives within the accelerated time frame despite the setback. Firefly attributed the incident to a software problem. To date, Firefly has completed one successful mission, experienced one failure, and encountered two partial failures. While not disastrous, this track record may undermine confidence among future customers if not improved. Currently, Firefly is setting ambitious goals for the upcoming launch. The company plans up to four alpha launches this year and six in 2025, aiming for monthly launches by 2026. It remains to be seen if they can successfully rebound from past setbacks. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.